Hey there everybody, welcome back to our guide on the Rimworld of Magic. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Druid class. The Druid, in my mind, is one of the more interesting classes. The Druid, in general, is a bit of a healer class in Rimworld of Magic. They do get some offensive abilities, but predominantly they're concerned with healing your colonists. But first, we're going to take a look at their primary offensive ability here. That being poison, a fast-acting toxin that works its way into the target's bloodstream. The more a target moves, the more lethal the poison becomes. It is, of course, not effective versus mechanoids. This is a right-click ability, so, of course, if they're caught out in combat, the druid will be able to defend themselves. This can be upgraded in three different ways. Potency increases, of course, the potency of the poison, dealing more damage per skill for each square the victim moves. Extraction method decreases the cost, and weaken limb increases the minimum and maximum severity level of the poison. Severity levels cause reduction in fighting and moving capabilities, and increase the duration of the poison. This is not a bad ability for mitigating your opponents in combat. It's not fantastic, but you know, if you find yourself being rushed by some bad dudes, poison could be pretty useful. Beguile animal is the next ability, and this is a really funny one. It allows you to target an animal, and if the animal is calm, it will turn them into a manhunter, and if they're already a manhunter, it'll turn it off. You can upgrade it in three different ways. By upgrading the main ability, you of course upgrade its primary stats, including range, recharge, maximum number of targets, and the AoE size. Beguiling Nature decreases the cost. Augmented Control gives the target creature a buff for their combat abilities. This is a lot of fun. If you get raided and they bring along, like, a muffalo or something, to just enrage the muffalo and see it turn against its own people. But this gets even funnier with different animal mods, such as Alpha Animals and Dragon's Descend. Seeing a raid bring in a dragon is a bit terrifying, but having a druid on board can make it really really funny. Druids get three different healing abilities. Regenerate is a healing over time ability. It'll heal a small amount to individual wounds. It'll only cure physical injuries and will not restore or heal damaged body parts. Intensified regeneration increases the base healing by a very small amount, 0.5 per tick. Efficient, of course, reduces the cost of regeneration while Enduring increases the duration of the regeneration. Cure Disease allows them to cure diseases which might be out of reach of even your priests. The base that you need to increase here is Disease Knowledge. This expands the number of diseases they can fight, so they start being able to fight flu and wounds, all the way up to the plague. Blood Rot. The effectiveness is determined by effective treatment. At level 0, starting out, it's a 75% effective treatment. At level 1, it becomes 100% successful as long as they know the disease. And then at levels 2 and 3, it boosts disease immunity for a couple of days. Natural healing, of course, reduces the cost. Next up is the ability Regrow Limb. This creates a seed of life required to regrow body parts. Regrowth surgeries will only appear as an option when all components of regrowth are within the resource zones as a single seed of life, mana potions, and a single medicine. You select the body part to regrow, and you want to make sure the druid or anyone else with this spell performs the surgery, and that the druid has 90 mana or more. The surgery itself is very costly. Regrowth is an interesting spell because while you can just cast it anywhere, you can also leave the spell right-click. If you go into your allowed area, you can create a regrowth seed zone. Then, every 10 minutes or so, the character will just, if they're walking past the regrowth seed zone, cast another regrowth into it. That way, you can stock up on regrowth seeds. 
Something to note is that regrowth seeds can be grown indoors, but do need to be refrigerated. So yeah, just like any other food that needs refrigerated, when they're frozen, they won't spoil at all, which is really useful if you need to stock them up. So we have this area here where we're allowed to regrow seeds, and over time, Bug Bug will just grow them in here on his own. So we'll have a healthy stockpile of regrowth seeds for if anybody loses any limbs. In general though, this is a very basic character. We do have two abilities from Cures Classes, Tailwind, which grants magical winds around the target, doubling their attack speed and increasing their chance to hit for a brief period of time. Leveling this reduces the cost and cooldown, but requires two points to level. Tailwind is okay. It just increases your attack speed. Bark Skin grants the target Bark Skin, providing heavy, heavily reduced susceptibility to physical damage, but increased susceptibility to heat. So as you can see, it gives 150% sharp and blunt armor with negative 150 heat resistance. Leveling this decreases the cost and cooldown and increases the duration of the buff. This buff has a pretty long lasting duration anyway. Now, the druid has two hidden spells, that is spells that aren't immediately visible on the character screen. There is of course no way to level these two spells, but the first is Briar Patch, which creates a hazard made of thorny vines. Any movement over the affected area will be slowed. Any creatures moving through the briar patch will take a small amount of damage. So if we just cast that here. We see thorny vines through which, yeah, characters, uh, characters have some trouble moving. Even Bug Bug here has trouble moving through his own vines. The final ability is Fertile Land. Fertile Land is what I think actually makes the druid most worth it. Fertile Land will increase the fertility of soil by 40%. So as we see, we've got this nice regularly fertile soil at 100% fertility. We go and cast Fertile Land. And as you see in a rather sizable area here, the fertility has increased. Now, the fertility map here shows it, though the regular map doesn't denote it, nor does the soil type. We place a growing zone over this area, and everything should grow at 140% of normal fertility. The only indicators you get, unfortunately, will be on the fertility map, or if you look very closely, you'll see these little sparks coming off of it. This is a really nifty ability very early in your colony, and um, I believe they can even do so over regularly fertile land. So we have a small group of cobalt workers to help us out here to show off just how useful fertile lands really is. So let's slap down a growing zone over that. We're gonna get so many potatoes. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Lovely big golden chips. All right, you kobolds, get to growing. All right, the sun has risen on a new day, and as we can see, we have dark soil here. Dark soil is special soil that's even better at growing foods. As you can see, this has 140% fertility, giving our plant a 116 grow rate, where our normal soil gives 100% grow rate. We're gonna bring Bug Bug up here, and let's slap down, make sure it covers as much of the dark soil as possible. Bam. So, our potato plants now have a 172% grow rate. That's amazing! And you might even think that's as good as it gets, but you'd be wrong, my friends. You see, defense in RimWorld is pretty important, and one of the early piece of pieces of advice that you're given is to build your base indoors. But the sun doesn't reach inside. Well, how is this of any use to us? You see, that's because 
if we just go ahead and slap down, say, this chem fuel generator, we can get on producing food indoors using these nifty hydroponic basins. You want to make sure that hydroponic basins remain powered at all times, otherwise all your food is going to go away, and that would be awful. In order for these things to be effective, we're also going to need some light, but not any kind of light. We're going to need sun lamps specifically. So, we've got our sun lamp, we've got our hydroponic basins, and uh, nowhere near enough power. Okay, give me a sec. All right. As you can see, now that we've uh, gotten sorted out a bit of power, we've got our hydroponic basins up and running. Hydroponic basins grow plants at 280% speed. That's fantastic, but we can do better. Bug bug, come here. All right, we just slap down our fertile land spell right here. And that 280% speed becomes 500 and 60% growth speed until the sun lamp goes out. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> plants can't be grown overnight. Now this is pretty good for farming regular food, but this isn't the only use of the fertile land spell. You see, mages have special requirements and special technologies that just other characters don't have to deal with. Along with the need for food and recreation and so on, mages require a thing called magicite. Magicite are how mages train for new spells and abilities. Magicite comes from a handful of places, from mining predominantly, but also from the Parasite Thornbush. Parasite Thornbush is a genetically altered plant that absorbs mana through a process of arcane transpiration and collects into chrysalis. As the plant matures, the chrysalis harden into magicite, which can be harvested. The rest of the plant consists of grass-like thorns and rigid stems. Note that ma uh, parasite plants will lower mana regen for all mages on the map if the number of par parasite plants exceeds the soft cap. Check the mod settings for the soft cap value. As you can see from Yuso here, we can put a parasite into the hydroponic basins. And this parasite is now growing at 468% its normal speed. Normally, it takes forever to get a parasite bush to grow, but it is currently the 4th of April May. 2,000 years later. And as you can see, here on the 10th, the parasite is already being harvested. We've got ourselves a small handful of unrefined magicite pulled off of these parasite bushes. Now these were planted on the 6th, and as you can see with their 132% growth rate, they're sitting here four days later at 24%. These things are going to take significantly longer. Parasite bushes also appear to not go back to 0% when they're harvested, which is pretty nice. Here, let's actually confirm that one, will we? Yeah, it goes down to 30%. That's pretty dope. So, over the rest of this day, it gained about 2%. That's not bad. I would say a druid is practically essential for growing a community of mages. Having the ability to improve the fertility of your hydroponic basins, or if you're out in the fields, just your farming land, is amazing. Having the ability to grow more magicite is absolutely essential because as you see we have several basins full of parasite and uh yeah so over the course of those days we've gotten 52 magicite and if we look at our scribing table here some of our cantrips um actually we'll look at the fertile land spell fertile land takes 130 unrefined magicite and 40 devil strand so uh yeah it can take a while to grow exactly what we need. But I would say that the druid makes, the druid and their fertile land spell makes growing a community of mages significantly easier. But that's just what I think. I'm interested in knowing what you guys think of the druid in the comments down below. If y'all are interested in RimWorld of Magic, I'll go ahead and leave a link to RimWorld of Magic and Cures Class add-ons in the description below as I use both of them. As well, you can join me over on Twitch. I try to stream there three days a week between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As well, you can join us over on the Discord where we talk about magic, RimWorld of magic, RimWorld, and modding in general. In the meantime, though, just remember, nobody's cares. Thank you very much and goodbye.
I know it seems kind of crazy, but we've been taught to think so. Wouldn't you care more about your job if you knew you were getting paid the same as your boss? Wouldn't you be more invested in the work you would be doing? Yeah, I don't really personally value labor. I think free time is much more important than labor. And even if I were paid the same as my boss, I would actually find that unfair. If